Like your typical sound engineer, started out in bands in high school and recording, basically, and was more interested in what was going on on the other side of the glass, so to speak. So I went to a Berklee College of Music and studied audio engineering, and then headed out to Hollywood and basically paid my dues in recording studios, getting coffee and running errands. I started out doing some consulting for some video game companies. And then the opportunity here at Sony presented itself to build a recording studio, to, to build this facility, to do what I needed to do. A big part of my job here is sound evangelist, to go around to the producers and be involved from the beginning of the project. They're realizing how important a piece of the puzzle sound is and talk to them about, you know, what are their goals for this project? What would they like it to sound like? We go over a style guide, you know, what movie soundtracks, what albums do they really like, and I take that information back and look it over and go through it and then get as close as I possibly can. Now I've got a few people that help me out. There's not enough hours in the day. I've got a guy named Nate Brenholt who is an amazing sound designer. He can do amazing things with an oscillator. He can usually be found in his office doing a typical laser blast, gunshots, footsteps, explosions, except uh, his are always a little bit huger, a little bit bigger than everyone else's. Chuck Dowd is on staff, and he is primarily a composer. He's doing the score for a game we're doing right now called Blasto. His bag, if you will, is what a lot of the producers in-house want on their games. We have an um, interactive audio engine here. We call it an adaptive MIDI engine. Chuck is composing the music for Blast, though, in such a way that it requires him to actually program the musical score to interact with gameplay. So as you uh, approach specific sections of a map or are attacked by some number of enemies, uh, the musical score will actually adapt to that situation, get more exciting, get more intense, get darker. You know, if you're just roaming around exploring, it'll get much more moody and just ethereal. And to the point where if you roam around long enough, the music will actually stop for a while, which is actually even more dramatic because then when you come around a corner and there's an enemy, you'll get this explosive music will enter back in. It'll just knock you right off your seat, so it, it works really well. Yeah, it requires Chuck to actually program the musical score. He has to really think about not only the typical issues you have to think about when you're composing musical motifs, but he has to think about each gameplay situation that may arise. It's amazing how it affects gameplay, how it uh, really just punctuates the, the emotion. The goal is really to just have the person play the game and go, wow, that was an amazing experience. They might not even able to be able to put their finger on why it was so much better than the last game they had in their PlayStation. It's just going to be one of those subliminal elements that just you know, heightens the experience. And it just shows the potential that the PlayStation has for sound generation. I think when people get this game, uh, they're going to hear the thing uh, perform like they haven't heard it perform before. I'd help you up, but I don't have a spatula with me. <laughs>